hear you. I hear you. Verse 12. Verse 12. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hands to tread my court? I thought you'd be happy that I came. God said, why are you here? You know, you know what you just read? Who required you to come tread my court? Who asked you to come walk up into my house? I ain't heard for no praise. The heavens, Psalms 19.1, the heavens declare the glory. I have angels praising me 24-7. Holy, holy, holy. You act like you're doing me a favor because you took time out of your busy schedule to grace my house with your presence. Tell somebody beside you, God ain't that desperate. <laughs> Sorry, he loves you, but he ain't that desperate. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Listen to what he says, verse 13. Bring no more vain oblations, empty vain. Your incense is an abomination unto me. Incense speaks of prayer. Your prayers are an abomination. Abomination means extreme hatred. I hate hearing you pray because your motive and your desire you don't want my face you want my hand and when you don't get my hand you pout rather than shout you get mad at me if you don't get my hand This is what he goes on to say, your new moons, your Sabbath, the calling of your assemblies, I can not away with. It is iniquity. Even the solemn meetings, your new moons, your appointed feasts, my soul hates it. They are trouble unto me. I'm weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will will not hear. Why? He said, because your hands are full of blood. You want to hurt my kids and then turn around and ask me to help you. You want to gossip and run one another down and then you want to ask me to bless you. And I'm looking at your hands and your hands are dripping with the blood of my children whom I died for. And then you don't understand why I don't want to bless you. You want to run down my kids. You want to talk about them. You want to put air the dirty laundry of the church out. And then you're mad at me because I don't bless you. You say, well, you don't understand. They hurt me at church. He said, you don't understand. There is a proper way to handle these things. And that means you must attack spiritual forces and not people. And the last thing I want you to do, the last thing I want you to do is go to the world and tell them the troubles of the church. The last thing I want you to do. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. The last thing I want you to do is go to somebody in the world and confide in them about what's gone wrong in the church. Because now when I want to save them, you have filled them with garbage. And the reason why some of your parents, some of your parents, some of the reason why some of your children don't want to come to church is because you've had baked preacher and fried saint and left them to eat up the bones. In other words, you talked in front of them about what was wrong with the church and who did what, and who was sleeping with who, and who said what, and how you got hurt by this person. And then you wonder why they don't want the church. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> but see, I hear more than just your everyday religious activity. I hear your heart. I hear the things that are coming from you. And I'm telling you that I want to bless you, but I can't bless you with all of this. 
God bless you with all of this. Did you hear what it comes down to say? Listen to verse 16, Isaiah 1, verse 16. Wash ye, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Stop oppressing folk in my house. Stop talking about people. Stop running down folk because they don't dress as nice as you do. Stop running down folk because maybe they didn't color coordinate their stuff together. And they looking at people like they're crazy. Like, you know, offering time is one of the most famous times because saints watch saints. And so people walk by and they check out shoes to purse to whatever. And, and you know, and they lean over and talk to each other. Girlfriend does not either have a girlfriend or a mirror because one of the two, the girlfriend or the mirror, would have told her that don't go. Mm. He said, stop oppressing my people. Come after the spiritual forces that are interfering with my people and I will bless you. Say amen. And that's why he says, now that's why he says in verse 18, come now, let us reason together, say if the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as what? Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as? And verse 19 becomes a, such a distinct key. If you be willing and obedient. No, no, no. It's not enough for you to be obedient. you got to be willing. Then you eat. So uh, he said, I'm watching you. I'm listening to you. Someone asked you to pick up a paper that is on the church floor. <sighs> mm, I heard you. I heard you. Yeah, I heard you. You want me to bend down and bless you, but you don't want to pick up a piece of paper off my floor. You want me to stretch forth my hands and touch you, but you don't want to stretch forth your hands and touch the things that make my house clean. I have a touch for the untouchable. That's why you're saved. But you don't want to touch some trash to get it off my floor that my house may be clean. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. He says, I want you to be understand that I listen to you. There's not a thought that goes through your mind that I don't hear. At no time do I ever ignore you. At no time do I ever look at you and not hear you. It is only if there is gross sin and then I make the decision. But other than that, I said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I hear you. I hear your hurts. I hear your concerns. I hear your fears. I hear your worries. I hear your questions. I hear your hopes. I hear your dreams. I hear them all. And at no time am I disconnected to you. Even when you don't pray, I still hear you. Even when you're just mulling things over in your mind, I hear you. Even though you don't address them to me, I hear you. Somebody lift your hands and thank God for hearing you. I, I hear you. <laughs> Ooh, thank you for hearing me. Thank you for hearing me. Ah, thank you for hearing me. Thank you for hearing me. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for hearing. So he wants you to know that I, I hear your prayers, I hear your concerns, I hear where you're at. But what I must do is the same thing I always do, and that is I must first align you up with my word by my spirit. Because you cannot get a $5,000 blessing with five cents worth of praise. You keep wanting to drop a nickel and then expect me to drop 5,000. 